skepticism from the consumer. And one of the biggest problems this whole ethical marketing has is it's made the consumer more and more cynical. They just don't trust it. They just don't believe the lies. They don't believe the phrase. As soon as they see the cliches, you know, you know um, it's not just money you're going to save, you know, and things like that. Turning over a new leaf, you know, it won't cost the earth, you know. Try it like that. It's an instant signal to consumers that this is bull. Okay, green bull. So it's quite interesting the findings on that. Who do you feel is responsible for saving the planet? This is a really interesting, but it's quite a complicated answer. You know, and the thing is, us the people or politicians and corporations? Well, 41% said in our survey that they thought the people were. And the other said, no, we think the corporations. Let me explain that a bit. What people believe is they believe that politicians and corporations have either raped the planet or, in the case of politicians, not taken enough responsibility for stopping the rape of the planet. They feel that most of us have been sold into this. You know, this debate about, you know, we use petrol and we moan about BP, but actually we're buying their petrol. And we're standing in a petrol station putting BP petrol in our car going, isn't it terrible what's happened in America? You know, we're, we're complete hypocrites. But they actually feel that, that these are big issues, that some of these issues are so big, it's up to the politicians and the corporations to do it. And if any of you read the details about the World Trade Agreement, you'll realise how bad politicians and corporations working together are trying to basically rip, rip off and rape people in the third world. It is quite disgusting what they're doing. So they do feel that they want to see more leadership from politicians and they want to see companies brought into control. There is this big, interesting enough what it does raise in some of our more detailed stuff, is that people are actually a little bit left wing. They actually don't like the greed of corporations. A lot of people kept saying, you know what, the problem is it's all about money. That's what it's all about. The reason we're in this state, it's all about money. It's because now we're in a world obsessed with making money, therefore it doesn't matter how you get it there. And because companies are driven to make more money, they shed their ethics very quickly and they rape the planet. Let's talk about the type of consumer. Now, some clients I meet seem to think that the green consumer is a bit of a swampy character, if you don't remember swampy. And this is a great picture that was probably a great ad for Mambo, but this is actually taken one of the peace camps. And, you know, it sort of symbolizes possibly the sort of negative image of somebody who might be a bit green. So let's look at green types. The first thing in advertising we use is appallingly archaic, ridiculous thing called ABC1. I can't understand why any client spends their money based on that because it doesn't exist it's not real. It's a Victorian mentality about if you're a doctor you, you spend your money differently than if you're a white van driver. Yes, you maybe do but in other studies, for example, the one in Luton, they looked at all the people in a particular street who all earned the same money worked in the Luton factory for Vauxhall. And guess what? No two people spent their money the same way. If you look at a typical suburban street in a lot of London, you guess what? One end of the street is a guy who's a taxi driver the other end is a guy in media, which is exactly what used to be in my street. And we all earn different incomes but you know what? Because of the way house prices went we could buy in at different levels. So the only guys who could afford to live in my street anymore had to have decent salaries. But, you know, 20 years ago, you could be a taxi driver and afford it. So we all spend our money in different ways. So a lot of this kind of making group assumptions is wrong. What we need to look at is mindset. And don't just think about greens and deep greens and some of these ridiculous terminologies. Let's just look at some of the groups. Eco-warriors. Now, if I'm going to be a bit cynical about it, you know, very hardcore. I've got one of my neighbours, cycles everywhere, wear sandals and bees, and pretty much not far off your sort of almost TV cliche. But you know what? It doesn't spend any money from a marketing point of view and a business point of view. They don't spend a lot of money. So actually, for someone like Sainsbury's and Waitrose, they're not of great interest because, you know, they recycle, they grow their own lettuce. So, you know, they're not going to be big business. But they are, you know, they're very passionate about it. For them, it's a sort of, you know, very much a way of life. Um, as for the freegans, well, there's no point in marketing to them. If you're not familiar with freegans, these are being called many things, you know, eco-warriors, you know, with a mission, or just, you know, sponges, because they live off everyone else. And they're renowned for actually being sort of sponges, and they live out of dumpster diving and all that kind of stuff, and taking freebies off everyone. If you get an ethical idealist, these are a very interesting group of people. They're very evangelistic. A lot, to be honest, like a lot of speakers you've got today, they believe, they have a faith in it, and they actually want to spread the word. They're a very important group of people because they actually can take your message out there. They'll preach it if they believe in you. I mean, I write a blog, and if someone comes to me with something really good, I'll write about it, and that spreads, and it gets in other blogs, you know, and all the rest. So if actually from a social networking point of view, these people can be quite influential. They must all have blogs, and they all have influence. And as a consequence, the newspapers read their blogs and then it gets in the newspapers. So very, very important people. 
quite, a, quite emotionally driven. Good lifers, very classic. This is, you know, typical of these two, the good life. These people who got a bit older, they now realise they want to get back to a bit of the, it's almost a bit of a romantic back to nature. They love words like natural, traditional, you know. All things used to be better in the old days. You know, tomatoes actually tasted like tomatoes, you know. All that kind of stuff. You know, this is your mum and dad, really. And, you know, they've got an allotment and they've turned part of the garden into a cabbage patch. These people are very passionate about, and they like local. These people are very keen on local as well. And they, you know, they're big on these issues, but it's a very romantic thing for them. Conscientious consumers, it's quite interesting how, if any of you had a child, how it changes your values and your parents' values as well, since they become grandparents. Suddenly we care about the world that our children are coming into. It's easy for us as individuals not to give a damn, you know, because we're too busy going through life. But as soon as we have a little one, suddenly we're conscious about the world. We're conscious about their safety. We're conscious about everything. And it's quite interesting. We worked on a cleaning product. It's very environmental, very, very clean and green. And they wanted to, you know, brag about how it was, you know, good for the planet. What we found out in research actually, especially among mothers, they actually, interesting enough, weren't interested in the planet. They were only interested in their home environment. And why they liked this product was not because it wasn't going to poison the, the, the seas and the rivers and all that. They liked the fact it wasn't going to poison their kid. Because if you knew what was in Mr. Muscle, seriously, if you spray your house with loads of Mr. Muscle and those others, it actually is a dangerous place to be. The chemicals it leaves behind, what you replace those germs with is something far worse, which is nasty chemicals. But with the clean, greener, greener cleaners, what you replace it with are just natural things like lemon, which is most commonly used. And when mothers found that out, not only were they really upset by the lies they'd been sold by big chemical companies, you know, pretending that the house was really clean, it redefined what clean meant. And that was more interesting to them, so it was about protecting their child and their environment. And then the whole green issue was secondary. So from a positioning point of view, sticking ads up saying, say it's the planet, wasn't going to sell any of it. But here's a more significant factor, and this is key on any any stuff within the ethical arena. Your product has to deliver the product promise first. <coughs> it's no good being a crap cleaner. Nobody will buy it. And this is some of the problems that Ecova's had a bit, is it hasn't cleaned as well as other products. And therefore, people have tried it and abandon it. What you need to do is you need to make sure your product is as good as everything else and reassure the consumer first that it is good and it does the job. And that's one thing consumers are saying. Yeah, I don't mind it. I love, love it if it's more ethical, it's greener, but it better do the job. If it isn't, I'm not trading that off. That's one thing we won't trade. So conscientious consumers, very much, you know, kids and, and grandparents, you know, they're coming more conscientious about the world. Seen to be green. This is my daughter, okay? <laughs> This is which is handbag fits very aptly. It's the idea of wearing a t-shirt saying I've gone green. It's the whole idea of it being a trendy accessory. Now, one side that gets people into it, but the sad side of it, it then makes it a fashion, a trend. We don't want it to be a trend. It should be here to stay. It shouldn't be, oh yeah, 2009, that was a big green trend, and then 2010, we all went back to consumerism again. You know, I find it quite ironic you go into Primark and buy something that you're going to buy and throw, and it's got some green message on it. So these people are much more about fashion. It's about trendiness. And interesting enough, when we did um, some research from one of the big utility companies about marketing their green tariff, what we found out consumers were saying was, yeah, I love it, I think it's a great idea and all that, but it isn't going to cost me any more money, but I want my neighbours to know I've signed up for it. It's very important that the Joneses next door know that I've now gone green. And this is really important, this idea of badging. Very, very important for them. And if they weren't going to, if they couldn't see any benefit from their image, they weren't interested. I'll talk about green thing. Informed consumers, this is a very similar to the other group earlier, but what is different? These people are very rational. This is, yeah, a lot of people I find in the green field ethics are very emotional. There's a group of people out there who are coldly rational. And I meet them at certain parties, and they're like professors, and sometimes journalists. And do you know what? They've just put all the facts together and go, God, we're in a deep hole here, guys. We really need to sort this out. They're seeing this as very much. They'll give you the figures. If we don't do something soon, we're screwed. You know. So they're very, very informed, and boy, do they know their stuff. Don't ever pick an argument with them, because they'll beat you to death with facts and figures. I was at one party, and we were talking about, you know, it's one of those things where you had to be really careful what you talk about. So we're talking about grow your own. I was saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got a little plot where I grow my own stuff. I said, I grow Jerusalem artichokes. Jerusalem artichokes? 
devil's food. I go, what's wrong with Jerusalem artichokes? He goes, yeah. He says, he says, well, don't you know? I said, well, no. You know, they've got these beautiful sunflowers that come out because they're part of sunflower. They're really tasty with a bit of butter. He says, yeah, well, it's, you know, it's that. Mm, that. He says, it's the farts. It makes you fart. No, it doesn't. He said, well, yes, it does. And that and beans. And he said, I've given up beans. I've given up this. Oh, this stuff he's given up. And then he then went on about cows and methane and got all his facts.